everybody. Welcome to iProperty Your Mind Matters series in partnership with Malaysia Positive Psychology Association or MPPA. iProperty.com.my believes in assisting agents to improve their personal and professional lives and live the life they really desire in the property industry. In this special episode, I am Hana Wong Abdullah and I am the Secretary of MPPA and I'll be delivering the topic of Manage Your Mindset with Personal Wellbeing Skills. Okay, ready to go? Right, so what is mindset? The definition is a mental attitude or how we are inclined to think. Also, a mindset, a strong one, is essential to developing a healthy self-esteem. So what do you think? Do you think that your self-esteem is good enough, high enough when you go out to work? So that is very much affected by how we think, right? Our mindset also affects our daily self-talk. Do you know how much you talk to yourself? How about um, the thoughts that come in and out, can do, cannot do, right? Self-talk is so important and no, we are not crazy. If we have a small uh, voice telling us, you know, things, giving opinions, that is our self-talk and that is normal, okay? Mindset also reinforces our beliefs and our attitudes and feelings about ourselves and how we think and feel about others. So mindset is so important and affects every part of our lives. Agree? All right. So look at this. Everybody would have heard this before, seeing this glass. What do you think? Is it half full? Half empty? And for those of you who are a little bit smart aleck maybe you are want to you want to be a very uh statistic base then you say oh it's not half full it's not half empty it's 50 percent filled with liquid also can but that just shows where your mindset is right now when we when we talk about the glass half full half empty a lot of um, psychologists or professionals or even trainers use it to show whether we are more optimistic or whether we are more pessimistic are we more positive or are we more negative? So what do you think you are? Are you more positive or more negative? Let's have a look. Have you read this book before? Or Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey? I share this with you because in the beginning of the book, uh, talking about paradigm shift. Stephen Covey talks about what is paradigm shift? Do you know what that is? Because when I first read the word paradigm shift, well, what is that? I had to read on and the story he told has stayed with me all these years. I think 20 years now since I first read the book. And um, yeah, so, so just in case some of you already know the story, it's okay. You know, let's, let's, let's have story time. So this man was uh, traveling on the train in, in America, right? And his kids were running up and down the, the, the carriage, making a lot of noise. I think there were about three or four kids that he had, and he was just sitting quietly, you know, head down, didn't really bother about his kids. And another passenger was just observing him not controlling his kids, running up and down, and really making a lot of noise and disturbing the other passengers. And, you know, one stop, two stops, three stops, the train was moving and these kids were still running around. And finally, this passenger couldn't take it anymore. You know, so much of public disturbance. So he, she said to the father, said, why aren't you controlling your kids? You know, they're making so much noise. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. We just came from the hospital. Their mother just passed away. And I really felt my mind literally shift the way I thought. So that, that was what, how I learned what is meant by paradigm shift. And I connect that story and paradigm shift to our thoughts of being positive or negative. So the passenger that complained, was she positive or negative? Negative, right? Because automatically assuming that 
um, this is a lousy parent, he doesn't know how to control his kids, and these kids are so badly behaved, so all negative. But when he explained that they just came from the hospital and that their mother had just died, she immediately felt, oh, oops, you know, I'm sorry for saying that and thinking that. So we can change, can't we? Yes, we can. So in my, in my study um, of strengths in positive psychology, I have really applied uh, counter thinking and counter thoughts. So it's always, there's always ways we can shift from negative to positive. And it happens the other way around also, of course. We are all emotional beings, right? So what do you have? Um, growth mindset and fixed mindset. This comes from Carol Dweck, also another positive psychologist. And she has shown us that, you know, we are very often, uh, we can tell which people have a growth mindset and who has um, a fixed mindset because uh, thinking about failure in this picture, failure for a growth mindset person is an opportunity to grow. Whereas a person with a fixed mindset will think, failure is the limit of my abilities. I cannot change. I'm unable to. This is me. This is all you get. So that is a person with a fixed mindset. So what do you think? Can you manage your mindset? Simple yes, simple no. But I would encourage everybody to ponder and to imagine and to just have some sense of wonder. What if everybody had a growth mindset? What if we always saw failure as stepping stones and we can learn and do better next time instead of things being a full stop. After all, life is not a full stop, is it? Okay. So when we know um, whether we have a growth mindset or fixed mindset or what our own mindset is, then we can start thinking about managing our mindset so that we can move towards a greater level of well-being, right? That's what we we're talking about today. So what is well-being? Being is uh, well-being is being in a state where you are healthy and happy. Where I am healthy and happy. And why is it important? It's important because it enables individuals to successfully overcome difficulties and achieve their life goals. So all of you have your life goals. I have mine also. How are you doing on your journey to achieve those goals? I mean, we were already going on a trajectory towards achieving our goals and then pandemic happened globally. So how is that for you right now? We need to manage the way we think because, okay, oops, you know, another um, challenge came up and another one and another one and they're coming even more rapidly now with all the lockdowns and Lockdown one, lockdown two, how? How can we manage our thoughts and our mindsets so that we can maintain or elevate our well-being? Let's have a look at this survey, right? Uh, for yourself, have a quick think about this survey. In the past two weeks, have you felt cheerful and in good spirits? If most of the time, um, choose number three points, give yourself three points. If half the time, give yourself two points. And if it's only some of the time, give yourself one point. And step number two, how have you felt? Have you felt calm and relaxed in the last two weeks? Most of the time or half the time or only some of the time? And then number three, how have you felt? Active and vigorous? Healthy or not, right? Most of the time, half of the time? or only a little bit. And then number four, in the past two weeks, how have you woken up in the morning? Feeling fresh and rested a lot, most of the time? 50-50 mm, some of the time, or very little, okay. And then number five, have your, has your daily life been filled with things that are interesting? 
So your day, interesting days, you have them most of the time or half of the time or only a little bit. Okay. Give yourself a score. Quick. Three, two, one. Are you good at mathematics? <laughs> All right. If your score was below 10, you may be experiencing demotivation. You may be experiencing health challenges. You may be experiencing elevated stress. And preference, you, might be, you may be preferring to be alone and not around other people. Or you might be feeling lost if your score was below 10. Okay? But if your score was 10 and above, you have high levels of well-being. What does that look like? You feel a sense of contentment, peace, everything is good, right? Or you could be feeling a zest for life and the ability to laugh, what's funny? So me having tech problems in this recording might be funny, I could laugh at that so I don't get stressed, right? Um, what else? We can adapt to change and we are flexible. So something happens, we fall down, schedule didn't go accordingly, we can be flexible and change and then keep on going. Um, what else? For self-confidence and high self-esteem, definitely. If you have a score of 10 and above, I would say your self-esteem is very high, you're confident, you can speak confidently. Um, every day is a bright day, a, a day of opportunity to do new things and to get more things done. What else? Able to build and maintain relationships, for sure. If we are having high level of well-being, remember, healthy and happy, we are probably having very good and positive relationships. Okay? So, these are indications. The quick survey, low or high, you can gauge for yourself. All right? Five things that we can do to maintain and improve our well-being. For those of us who are having scores of less than 10, please keep this in mind. And even those who have, um, who have high levels of well-being, this is good for maintenance as well. One, exercise. Being healthy is so important. So at least 30 minutes for most of the days of the week. It doesn't have to be every day, just most of the days. Maybe, you know, four days, um, not three days. That's not most of the week, okay? Four days at least. And then eat healthy. Eat a healthy diet and avoid overeating. This is not anything new. All of us hear this all the time. Less junk food, less salt, less sugar. Um, and for us, in my family, because my husband had a heart attack two years ago, we completely changed the way we eat. Uh, it's no more the Asian way of, you know, a lot of dishes, lauk in the middle of the table. Half the plate is vegetable, salad, and then quarter plate uh, is protein and quarter plate is carbohydrate. And we've been eating like this for uh, six months now and all of us feel great. We've definitely lost weight, we've increased exercise, eating healthy. So eating healthy is not too difficult if the whole family can um, support and eat together, okay, healthily. Uh, what's another thing we can do to maintain? Me time. Mm, uh, my friends know this very well about me. What's my me time? My me time is going to the hair salon uh, uh, when we could. Now, cannot. Uh, but why I love the hair salon so much? Three times a week at least. It's because when I go there and, and the girls, you know, help me wash my hair for me. They give me a nice head and shoulder massage. I think, mm, this is me time. I don't need to talk to anybody. The girls are very good. They know when I feel like talking and they also know when I feel like having quiet. And that is my me time. So I have my me time three times a week. How about you? What do you do for your me time? Very important because when we have me time, we are showing the world that I take care of myself. I care about myself. And this is how other people can care about me. Right? If we don't love ourselves, how is everybody else going to love us? How do they know how to love us? Okay, what's next? 
keep in touch physically distant socially close <laughs> all right yes human connection is so important for us we are social beings human beings are social beings uh if we are if we cannot be physically close to uh the people that we want to be close to physically then let's keep uh each other socially close right connect with the phone talking writing uh, messages or letters all are good and then having fun Please balance work, life, and fun. And laughter is a great medicine. Of course, it is. Uh, whenever we feel down, we can watch a movie, listen to some jokes. I know my husband in the morning when he's watching his TikTok, he goes hey 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 hey. Then I was what what what. Then he will share with me. So we also have a laugh together. Okay. So please, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, make yourself a priority. Right. That is how we can manage our mindset. So that we can have um, high levels of well-being. All right. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And um, during this session, I hope you've learned something towards positive psychology and improving your well-being with these very simple tips. Thank you. <laughs>